All right. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining me and um, the artist talk. Uh, my name is Javier Robles. I am the curator for the exhibition Ambientes Places After Time. And um, yeah, I want to start off with a poem um, that I wrote last year. Um, and it's, it's a poem. Yeah, let me just start. Um, and then we could talk about it and then we could get into the conversation. Um, so yeah, um, so, and it, it titled the poem Mappings, but I'm still, I'm not sure about it. Um, anyway, it's a working title. Um, in the temporary, the day, the night, in the fragmented, in the, the line between and dusk, in the collapsed, the on top, the on bottom, the in the certain, the saturated, the ch the chiles, the corn, translations become the quotidian, the fake, the plastic, the plastic, the plastic, in an unstable belonging, in the absence of touch, and in the presence of a body, the residue, the ingenuity of brown, I mean integrity, also the impulse of rascuache, instinctual acts of making it work, the capacity to create and manifest the power of place, the power to reimagine what once was, the power in the miraculous, the power of self-making, the power of disidentify. Nostalgia carries too much weight to carry. This is, the, this is in the currently, the present already here in the deception of reality. Reality is not is no longer always factual, never was in the age of the fake. Unforgivingly, reality almost unbearable and breakable to constantly recreate, to constantly reimagine, to constantly build a sense of place. Always packing, always leaving, always arriving, comfortably until it leaves again and again and again and in the ephemeral, bright, colorful, seductive desires, notes on place, notes on unbelonging, notes on self-making, notes on dis notes on dis disidentification, notes on I am always self-making, I am and have and always will be here. There's a map of making I'm always attuned to, walking up Fairview to catch the 47 to the 64. I find myself in La Carniceria at South Coast Plaza Ma at the thrift store on first, in the Korean owned farmer's market, Santana, where Natalie's sister now works, in my backyard a mile, at Miles Court Park, in and, at, in and at the Santana Riverbed and La Cuatro, also known as Downtown Santana, in the club, in the dance floor at the 99 cent store, mirrors of me exist and I make mirrors of places. Down Fairview and back and again and in Swami Flea Market and Ortianguis or whatever, La Pulga, abundant is nature, abundant is leisure, abundant in. In the symbols of the everyday, I turn to the unpractical aspects of making practical imagination and a sort of salivation, a comp compromised desire to be who I want to be while performing, normal performing, abnormal, performative, performing, performing broken over function and interruption of assembly lines, systems and embedded embodied acti active looking. And it is how I continue to translate, lost in translation, in translating, and in tongues, a flocking, a murmuration, a sound, and a map of places I've never been to, but I always wanted to, because what's more exciting than creating your own sense of place when you've never felt like you belonged? So with this poem, um, I begin, um, because I feel like this really becomes an anchor to the show or the exhibition and the opportunity to um, invite these beautiful like six artists to be in conversation and really share space with one another like really is telling of the type of um, conversations that we aren't having and we want to continue to have. Um, so I start off with um, Melly's image, uh, whose print is Aurita. And so it just starts with like right now. 
and it's like the present moment and I feel like that work really spoke to me in that way um where the there's the detailed iron work that most of the doors in like specific neighborhoods um have and the present moment like ahorita meaning yeah like present in the now i feel like it's really powerful to the entire exhibition because i feel like it kind of tunes us back into place into the now into the breath of like the artists and the ability to be um reminded of of the now is really what's what what i really um resonated with with this sprint and then um we start off with um williams image which i really also feels very um i guess very significant to me because sometimes this is what like my backyard looks like because we've accumulated so much and like you really don't know what to do with it at times and you kind of there's like this uh, this like i think there's also like this lack mentality where you want to hold on to everything because everything is what's able to um define you and able to like ground you in, in one way or another because you're no longer like moving you're no longer like walking no way you're not longer like in transition like you're like surrounded by these objects and these things that are really relevant to who you are and um yeah and so that's that's something that i really um resonated with um and that's with with one of um william's images so as you can see this is like one of the the one of the walls in the exhibition um and i was i guess i want to invite um yeah william and Melly and i guess myself to also like have a conversation like how do you see yourselves um your print on the wall Melly's print on the wall in conversation with william's photographs but also like that little purse that i made of tender cactuses and I think that there's a big conversation there to have. And I, um, yeah, I guess I want to invite you all to also take and kind of chime in and like have a conversation, whether whether it's your work or not. Um, I think we all have something to say about these kind of Im visual imagery images that we're both, we're all kind of creating. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see like uh, Melly's, you know, we have one of those doors and I had one of those doors when I was growing up in an apartment complex as well. You know, very rasquache, very kind of like, you know, um, closing that door to, uh, but not the main door, right? To let the like air in también. Um, and then just kind of like, you know, thinking about um, the kind of rasquache aesthetic that, that we're thinking about and how we can kind of like elevate that. Uh, and elevated throughout our practice. And I see that a lot in, in the practices of, of all of y'all too, right? So I think uh, those are some connections that I do see with all the work. Um, elevating that, putting them on white walls is something that I've always kind of like loved and uh, like admire from all of your work. Yeah, I think also like when I look at these works, I think about the act of documentation and archiving, but in a way that is more through the tangible, through the objects and thinking about how objects and places and land can hold meanings and can hold these different stories and different um, moments of time. Um, what, whether you know you see that in the rust of the door, whether you see that in the way the door is made or even just like the accumulation of things and the telling of time and the narr like just a narrative that really exists within these objects and I think that's what really was fascinating me um with this show is thinking about how objects can be vessels of mm -hmm. storytelling and narration um and just documentation of these bodies are here these families are here these stories live here within mm -hmm. within these objects within these places so that's what really like I think I love the most about like the theme of the show and just seeing all these works together and seeing kind of like how we all kind of like figure that out together. 
Yeah, and I feel like we're also all kind of creating like this new sense of place or like new like this new neighborhood that we really don't like we don't really know like what's actually like really happens. But I know like through the objects and through the images and the visual imagery that we're actually able to tell and create a, a type of neighborhood that really is kind of it's really fascinating to think because we're all different. We all grew up in different neighborhoods but we all have us like a brown sensibility of where we lived and where we grew up. And like, for example, like, like the door is the same thing. Like I grew up with that similar door in the old house, the older house that I used to live at. And so like, and it's also interesting because in like now that I live in New York, there is beautiful like ironwork, but I don't really see it um, in houses as as often because it, it almost doesn't yeah it, it almost like would they miss something there like but you're still able to see the the ironwork throughout it's just not like a door like that one and i guess also for this um this why i also was, was thinking a lot about um the ways in which um your print melee um it's like an entrance it's like it's like you know there's a family that lives there um you know, there's a family that lives there and like, who's the family? And then like, once we get to it, we get to see um, like William's images, which is like, okay, well, there's a family in there. There's like food, there's a type of like sensibility. There's a, there's, yeah, there's a, a sensibility there and there's this kind of food, there's a still life. But also I'm thinking about this images and these images as like, these interiorities of, of whether of a self, of a place, of a neighborhood, of a town, of, of, of a home. And um, thinking of, of them as how they're no longer gonna be, it's never gonna be in that same arrangement again. And so that's where I'm interested in like the ahorita and the present, the breath, which is like, I think William is really pointing us to, um, to think about, and it's just like, these things are gonna move. And then even thinking about the time in the in your print, Melly, it's just like there's like an age of awareness um, that really is interesting. And I think um, putting it in conversation with um, my little bag is also interesting because it's like William is documenting these like objects that are exist in the kitchen, but I'm also like allowing them these objects to speak to me and kind of like transform and become these other things that. Um, like could have potential and that they could be like um fabulous and they could be like um they could you could take it to the club and so it's like these things that like that we allow ourselves to 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 create a new another narrative within the things that are already around us um is what i'm really interested in as well and even thinking about um and I think another piece is what I'm really, um, William's um, mom, like her, his mom is like there, um, like absorbing like the the timeliness, like there's such a timeliness in the image that I really am drawn to. And I think it's very present, like, you know, that like California sun set and that sunlight that comes through the windows that comes through into your house. And I think that's very touching and I think, and like the refusal too, I feel like his mom's like giving us um, her back. And I think that's also really powerful too. It's just like, oh, like she's in the environment and like, but there's also like this relishing, relishing in, in, that, in that moment. Um, and I think it's also what, um, going back to that essay that I was talking, that I kind of based the exhibition out of, which is, um, Affective Atmospheres by Ben Anderson. Um, he mentions this idea of like, he notes this phenomenologist, um, Dufresne, who is thinking about, um, so there's this like, at, he, he kind of notes on how this phenomenologist uses the word atmosphere. And he says, atmospheres is, the, uh, is in the term you, um, Dufresne uses for how the express world overflows the representational content of the aesthetic object as. And so I think um, I think this idea of the expressed world is really interesting. Um, it orients us to how each of you, each of the artists are thinking about um, 
the worlds that we inhabit. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about these images, um, William. How um, they how they came to be? How and like when did you realize like this is the moment or like I should take this image? Mm -hmm. Kind of, um, I feel like that's also very interesting to know about from as the artist. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, um, you know, I'm thinking about like the the history, the history of art history, the like, um, you know, the still lives, right? And kind of like trying to combat that that aesthetic, but also think about like how we can elevate the elevate um, this aesthetic as kind of trying to normalize it, but also right not be stigma, uh, like adding stigma to that kind of notion of like. Um, you know you know they call, may call us hoarders then they call us kind of like you know right and that's kind of like that that new wave of minimalism that i hate um because we are all like you know we're very resourceful and i try to um you know connect a lived experience to my like theoretical practice in photography um and on the right you know my mother um i think she always has a you know i give her the autonomy to uh you know when i photograph her uh, because I think it's still important to give autonomy to folks when you're photographing them, right? It's not just about, uh, you know, the picture taker, the the photographer. Um, it's also about like who's the audience going to be, but also the autonomy of the of the person that you're taking that image. Um, and I think especially uh, with knowing how my mom is sometimes, like not wanting to take a picture, she's like, you can take a picture, but just don't show my face, you know, like. Uh, and giving her that autonomy, is, I think, is powerful when it comes to kind of uh, image making. Um, and not being able to be like uh, super hierarchical in that sense too, right? As a photographer, um, you know, because that's why I left photojournalism because I thought there was a, a hierarchical kind of being of, of you know, coming into a community that's not yours, um, you know, thinking that that your images are going to fix this community uh, and kind of absolving yourself of that, right? Um, or feeling good about that. Uh, but it's it's so so much more than that, especially in photography and especially when it comes to like. Uh, these uh, images of Latinx communities. So I think that's, you know, that's something, um, you know, I, I do have a whole series of like still lives that I've kind of arranged, um, you know, stepping away from photojournalism, I was able to kind of actually also manipulate some of these, you know, add stuff in, remove some of the stuff. Um, you're able to do that now. I think, I, you know, I'm able to do that with the work that I'm, I'm making, uh, especially the still lives that I'm kind of creating in my household. Yeah, I think that um, sometimes we get caught up on bodies and we get caught up with people when I think there's also other ways to tell these stories. And that's why I a lot, that's why I use, I work with a lot of objects um, because I think objects are just as enough um, to be able to tell the stories that we want to tell. Um, I think that's, yeah, and that's why I'm like really interested in like the materialities that um, inhabit these spaces, um, especially like with with the uh, sombrero, um, and also kind of like it has like this kind of um, queer gesture to to it too. And I feel like this like um, the the lasso uh, or lasso. It's like what is it called? Like I know it as lasso. <laughs> uh, rienda, the term rienda. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so we, it's like this, like this material also is very interesting because it gets used a lot in like packages. Um, when like my grandpa used to come from Mexico, he used to create it. He used to like elaborately like bring it and wrap this box so that it held together. And that was like part of the structure. Um, I also want to talk about, and, I, and yeah, and so I guess like, that's also interesting to know. But also, I guess moving on, I think Nancy also really situates us in a place with these flowers. Um, and I'm really fascinated um, by how like conventional they are and how accessible they are, but also how um, when placed or when, when placed in a, in a court, like in a location, I think they become transformed and I think, Nancy's work really also inspires me because of the ways um, she's using these materials that are also pointing towards a location, pointing towards like a place of, of 
belonging and if you want to talk a little bit more about it Nancy I invite you because I think it's really fabulous and I think mm -hmm. this really grounds the exhibition too mm -hmm. yeah um yeah this piece changes throughout location and um I, yeah, I mean, it's uh, called an ode to plastic flowers. Um, and so, I mean, it, it's really just, I mean, an aesthetic that, that I picked up from my neighborhoods, from my neighborhood and just like neighborhoods in Chicago. Um, you know, seeing these plastic flowers all over the neighborhood, like in random corners. <laughs> that are not very random. Yeah. Uh, that are very uh, sacred, sacred spaces. And yeah, to me, this piece is, is like a poem, uh, reads to me as a poem. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's not, none of my pieces are actually touching the gallery. Um, so, maybe like that green piece at the end is probably like touching the ceiling a little bit, but um, I really tried hard for them not to touch any space. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's- Intertwined, you know, intertwined within each other. And to me, all of the flowers kind of represent all of these spaces that um, I always wonder like, what's gonna happen to the altars when the place gets gentrified, you know? Um, what's gonna happen to like all these, these memorials because uh, there's so many people that have, you know, call aldermans and email them and tell them like, hey, all of these memorials are like distracting us while we drive. So um, just thinking about like the trauma that, you know, black and brown neighborhoods go through and, um, like how ephemeral those moments are, as well as like how ephemeral the 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 um, the altars are, as well as like just how permanent like these events are for people, and how like even though they're like fleeting, um, it it like emotionally, physically takes on like this this longer long term. Um, effect that that like we still don't even like understand like I'm sure we're still like we're still feeling that effect of something that happened in the 90s you know what I'm saying so yeah exactly I think that's real yeah I feel like that's really what happens when um and that's kind of where I'm um that's the place of where I want to speak about from like it, in, in, in this whole exhibition because we're so attuned to these like bodily um, responses and like gestures. It's like the ways, even like the ways you even like start intertwining each of the flowers. It's like, there's a physicality and there's a material uh, engagement that happens that with the actual like plastic flowers and the beauty of them too, just the bright vibrant colors is also like really, um, seductive but also like it's also telling of like the the life that these um places contain through through um through the colors and through the um placement of these flowers in them and that and also like the it's also like the vibrancy and like and which is like the life but also like the absence of it it's just like they're placed in response to an absence and i think there there is like that like going back to like the bodily aurita and the bodily um absence that that uh, we are able to hold and then we have this um this is like the other side of the wall um across from the um exhibition across from each other and i think these become really interesting in conversation as well, because I think uh, we have Alejandro's pieces, and then we have uh, one of my photographs, and then we have um, Itzel's pieces, and then we have your pieces again, Nancy, um, which is really, um, I think they really are, it's kind of like this weird network that 
no matter how you read the the, the exhibition or whether because we're 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 taught to read things linearly but i think in my mind i'm, I'm seeing them they're just kind of they're all talking to each other they're all kind of across from each other they are creating like this like intricate web uh, which goes back to that neighborhood um that web of like different feelings of different emotions of different like um affects of different like like weathers different climates and i think that's where like the atmosphere aspect comes into the conversation too of this exhibition because we're all kind of paying attention to these um feelings these type of sensations and um, bodily responses that um yeah that that we feel inside and are also visually able to see um and so um i wanted to piece these pieces together, um, Melis and conversation with Alejandro's because I feel like they're um, say, like they're Alejandro's like pointing us to the natural world of these neighborhoods. And, um, and I think that's really um, beautiful and poetic. And I think one of, especially because like the Bugambilias, which are so prominent in California, um, is also very like fascinating and obviously they're they're prominent throughout the country the, the, throughout the country but i think i have a very like specific understanding of them here in santana too and the bugambilias while wow, this bugambilias from ciudad de mexico i think um is really interesting to also have that kind of like transnational like um connection and i think going back to um to meli's image image is like oh well um this door is like it's like either an entrance to a garden or an exit to a garden and so just like thinking about that um it's really interesting um do you want to talk more about um your process of making them alejandro because i think that's also very rich um in how these um these images become translations of a place and i think that's also part of like the narrative that um, I'm trying to address in, in this kind of exhibition. It's like, how do we translate um, images to? Um, I'll start explaining the process of the geraniums on the right. Um, so those are um, actually for a show that happened several years ago at Heaven Gallery. I had the series of geraniums that I drew from memory and it was uh, tracing back a memory of me playing in my aunt's garden with flowers and just um, doing this memory exercise. I was trying to um, recount like my encounters with flowers and have developed a uh, language, a language of care to a certain extent with them. Um, so it took me back to like being a little kid uh, playing with my a cousin, um, this game where we would just grab the dry petals um, and put them in a bucket with dirt and like do witchcraft. So this kind of like, there was this kind of like aim to like transmutation of like the plant matter where it became like this like beautiful, like bright color thing that we like, but then also like dried out. And then like, it became this like dirty water that was like trying to become something different. So there was always this kind of like um kind of like desire to like create a new form in some way uh, of expression of performing uh so then that that kind of gesture of play got transferred um to the process of the plaster piece on the left um in which uh for that piece um while i while i was visiting um mexico city just before the pandemic i walked under this like big bougainvillea tree and like so i just picked up some some of those actual flowers and then uh, so that's the drawing of that tree with some actual bougainvillea flowers from that tree from that space um, and the process that is made is um i draw with soft pastels in a piece of fabric then i laid out the flower petals and then i pour plaster so the actual work is like made um, like my mark making is like absent from it. It's like, it's just flower petals and plaster being pressed um, on the surface that you see and the soft pastel getting like imprinted there. So it's about like 
breaking up the image and creating temporalities and like kind of like the memory of this of the memory of walking under the tree the memory of uh, the plant being like the flower being like bright and like now it's being embedded in its in the materiality of the piece and like decay continue to decay and like perform its materiality yeah and it's almost like the the image it's like an ephemera of the actual event of the actual moment um both of the fist both of like the event but also of like the um the the material like the the natural material uh which is like the plant and i think um i guess one question for you and Melly is like how do y'all see um these these pieces in conversation with one another if um if any i mean i obviously see them in conversation but i like to hear um what you think Melly, and how what you see Alejandro as, as a conversation. Or anyone else too. Yeah, I mean, I see the process, the process like hearing Alejandro speak about their process and also like Meli, like, you know, the image of the, the door and the aurita like to me is is the same thing you know because i i think about like my grandma's house in the front porch and it being filled with flowers you know and just like sitting on the stoop smelling flowers so it's it's definitely like a spatial relationship and yeah a, a ephemeral time like time lapse that's all I got. <laughs> yeah. I think what's interesting about placing these two images together, I think is like the amount of weight in each image, you know, cause I'm thinking about Bogambilia and you know, like while each flower, like every petal is very, you know, light and like, you know, airy, but when you put it together, like a Bogambilia whole plant is, is a, has a presence. It has, you know, a shape, it has a structure. And I'm seeing that also with this door, you know, like this door, this type of door um, that I'm sure we're all familiar with has a very specific shape and it, it's like a signal. It's like a symbol of, of someone's home, you know, or of just a very specific type of, you know, neighborhood or a very specific type of family that inhabits there. And I think that in that way, they have that relationship of, you know, you know, being a marker, um, being a symbol of something, um, kind of like a preface to what is in this space, um, which I think is really beautiful. I also think about it like how um, nature is very present, you know? It's like these flowers are also very present. Um, the geranium um, translation is also very present. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think that's something that to think about too. Javi, can I add something? Yeah, of course. For me, um, I also kind of like that the, the arrangement of the pieces is mim mimicking or mirroring rather what actually happens with these gates and doors. You, you see the flowers on the other side, they're there, you know? And um, Alejandro, you mentioned something about temporalities and you, trying to make something of those temporalities and I feel like all of us in different ways are doing the same thing we're going back to these memories and um whether we are like looking for them when photographing on the streets or like drawing them from memory and yeah I, that's the atmosphere I think that's happening in this show and like the network of conversations that we're having. I think I went on a tangent, sorry. Oh, we're, we're back to your images now. So I think it's like this like re coming back to like that network. And so I think your your images then come back into this network um, and already exist within that network. And I think something that you said on the chat, um, it's like we're creating a collective um, what is it? 
Well, well, sorry, I'm like trying to access the chat. Um, it's a collective imagination. Yeah, and I think that's like we're we're uh, attuning to this like visual imagination that while it's also very present, it's also like an imagination. Um, yeah, somebody, I think somebody said something about the gate and it being really emblematic and recognizable. And I was actually, I'm from Miami and there's a bunch of those gates, but I'm in Brooklyn right now and I was just walking past the house and I saw it and immediately I'm like, oh, I know this person, you know, there was like an instant connection. I can't even explain it, but this sudden like warmth overcame me and it felt very familiar, um, which is I think what's happening with us in this show when we see each other's work and it as a collective too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I mean, now that even we're thinking about it, it's just like the gate is like a reinterpretation of like a flower or something natural, like something organic, you know, like the details of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's just like, it goes back to like that whole conversation of like, it's like we're like copying the world and the world is like also like, or like maybe I want to say translating the world because the world ex exists in its form, but like, we're like reflecting each other. We're reflecting the world into, in, in this whole exhibition. And I think that's really also very powerful. Um, and I guess we could go back, we could go to your images. Um, I think it's also interesting how you visit these images and how you visit these places and how these like some of like, I mean, like for that, like the hair salon, like these, it's it, it like it's really literally down the street of haven gallery and so i think that's also interesting how that exists in conversation with the gallery and the space themselves and i think also um the image of um the young girl um is really interesting um how the light is piercing through through the um like blinds and there's like this like soft like temporal moment of reflection and it, I think if we remember like uh, William's image of like his mother like the like it's like it's, the timings are almost similar because of the ways that the lighting is hitting and like I'm like this image was taken in Miami and so it's just like that um that different like light that it's like you you under, I like I understand William's image because it's like the California sunset but it's like your image it's like the florida like sun set and it's just like how does how are these also like interconnected which i really um find also very powerful and it's like the ways in which um and also like this time like the young girl is kind of like giving us attention her her gaze um if you want to talk more about it about the image and how it's kind of like made or both of the these images and how like they're in conversation with each other. Um, just to add on to the point of William's work being set or that photograph being taken in California and then this one in Miami, just, I think, I don't think we thought about this when we were setting things up, but remember Javi, you and I talked about like our work sitting next to each other. And um, I actually glad that it worked out this way, given that like one is on the East and one is in the West and both in both images, like the sun is setting and they're different suns. Um, I was having a conversation with someone about photography yesterday and how um, I think that the language photography as this language like, is really easily accessible. Um, and, you know, in both moments, it's that beautiful, like golden hour lighting, yet in different places, um, different spaces, um, we still capture that ephemera, like the beauty of the moment. But although they're not quite the same, you know, and they can never be the same. Um, but yeah, um, these two people, uh, well, the main subjects, which I would say is the woman who's on the left looking left, she's not the one with the foils in her hair. Um, the one in the middle of center, they're both, both the main subjects are in the center. Um, the image on the left was taken at this salon called Happy Cuts, which is on Milwaukee and Logan. And that photo was back from 2018, I wanna say. Yeah, 2018. 
so I, I used to live in Logan and I was just like walking down Milwaukee, I don't know, doing my thing. And I, I passed by the salon and I see this woman with this like beautiful orange shirt, this like really bright red lipstick. Um, she had like a purple apron on. And I was like, wow, I, I must photograph this person. I just saw her through the window. I'm like, I'm going inside and I'm asking for a picture. I didn't have my camera on me. So I said, you know, I'm a photographer. I swear, can I just take a photo with my phone? I'll be back. Um, and then the following week, I came back with my camera and that started our relationship. Um, she's Mexican from Oaxaca and um, I'm half Mexican. So I think we had that to connect over. But eventually she kind of became like this maternal figure for me. And I'd go back to the salon every couple of days, every weekend to to talk to her and also to photograph her, but mainly really to talk to her. Um, and yeah we we still have a friendship she actually cut my hair two weeks ago while I was in Chicago I went back to the salon which is like a moment that I'd I'd really I thought about it for a long time like I've had this connection with this individual I photograph her in her place of work really intimately yet she's never cut my hair um so that felt really special and precious but I think in what I'm interested in photographing are like those little moments that are kind of left out of I don't the mainstream so those moments that you like peek through a window and you see someone laying there beautifully but it's not what you're seeing like on television right because everything is really whitewashed so I want like my people and the people I know to be like front and center stage and like emphasize like the beauty that nobody else gets to see or witness or live or actually just like maybe ignores and pretends doesn't exist. Um, which is also, I really like, I love the idea of William's still life. Um, and I think it, now the still life, the gate, it's like all building, we're building like our own beauty and preserving it. Um, so yeah, in both of these photos, I think it's that peak of like a beautiful moment that people don't often get to see you know I'm sure a bunch of people have walked by the salon and you know it's it's very humble and homey and haven't like thought twice about like the beauty that this place holds um but and like the beauty and like um the the things that we do miss um which is also like goes back to the um the temporary right and I think you know I said that we had she felt like a maternal figure for me and I think in going there I'm like wait am I just like looking for my mom like I, I, have I held on to this like 50 year old Mexican woman because I just miss my mother and like my tias and I'm looking for that and coming here you know I'm like is this what the project is actually all about nostalgia yeah. and it's also like finding mirrors right it's like we're finding reflections of other things and for us that allows us to also um, make a sense of place or make sense of of a home and like build a home and like and I think that's all what like we're also kind of taking part in I guess um moving forward um also I think Nancy's pieces also are very interesting um next to yours because of the same um form of like the temporary and like the, but also like the ritual that goes into these spaces and like how sometimes like labor at the salon is a type of ritual. Um, and, um, but also like the ways um, these spaces hold histories and um, a narrative that um, is only very present and only, only very relevant to that specific place. Um, and the ways also like the spaces hold energy um, and it's interesting to have these works because they're like a, they're a performance um, of, of ephemera that like also happens on the day to day. Um, and I think that's um, I think that's also what allows us to have a conversation about um, these um, places as well. Um, unless you want to do you want to add anything Nancy um, or anyone else. 
Um, yeah, I mean, these both of these pieces were uh, ceremonies, uh, so like spiritual ceremonies. Um, I'm a medium, so I get contacted by <laughs> by the spirits, <laughs> and I and I use that a lot in my work. Um, by you know, I've I've helped a lot of spirits uh, move move on to wherever they're going <laughs> that we'll eventually find out. Um, yeah, a lot of just like spiritual connection with these spaces, um, bringing flowers to like spaces where people have passed away and having a list of, of spaces uh, uh, given to me by, by people who have lost those family members. And then the one on the, on the right is actually uh, my childhood home, uh, where I performed a ceremony. Um, there was a, a little girl who was actually my my friend's student um, that that lives there now, and um, she was saying that she saw a ghost. Um, and the the my friend showed her a picture of my uncle who passed away in in that space that is highlighted with the with the gold, and um, and yeah, and it was it was my uncle, the ghost that she saw. So I I did a ceremony to help him move on from that space, and documented it with uh, video, photography, and then ultimately transcribing it as a as a photo, as a as a drawing, um, to create that like distance from from the actual space and and yeah. <laughs> I, I really love that. I just love the ways in which like we're able to like look at something and not fully know its history. Um, but also the because of the ways in which it exists in different like temporalities um and different like spaces that are not of this world sometimes or are of this world. Um I think that's really powerful too. Um, and I think it also is interesting because I know your work relates to a lot of the um, the issues that are kind of hidden in Chicago that not a lot of people who are from Chicago um, get to experience or understand. Um, and I think that's also really, um, I think that's also like a way of like preserving a history um, more of like your own history too um yeah I, I really appreciate that um now we have this um this wall too and i guess i want to invite um steven to um to have a conversation to add um his thoughts or like how he sees um this um while kind of in conversation with his like really dominant, like really prominent like sculpture. Um, because I see the ways they're all kind of talking to each other in, in different like waves in different times, but I think they're all still very relevant. Um, yeah, uh, I think that there's just been like so many fantastic things that everyone has been touching on and um, I think my piece, it, it, it is sort of like dominant on the wall. It's like really, really heavy uh, in symbolism. And I'm actually really happy with some of the ways that the symbolism is interpreted um, differently. Uh, and I think that also the piece, when I made it, you know, I was really trying to be as careful as I could and, and as accurate and really um, adorn the piece really well. And you know, when you get close to it, you can kind of see the areas where it's not perfect and the there's the visible wire, the holes may not may not be lined up. Um, you know, so I was just kind of like wrestling and struggling through a craft that I didn't know and was trying to like um, get to a place of of honoring something in that the piece really comes from uh, this idea I had of wanting to honor my grandfather and um, and and try to you know, by adorning a very like, um, you know, sort of obvious 
tool of labor, um, hopefully invite people to appreciate some of what comes through the, I don't want to say sacrifice of labor, but, but more or less like what the labor will cost somebody um, in terms of their own body, not in terms of like market value. Um, and so I think that, that the process of making this piece kind of, um, um, it, may, it, it did a couple things. Like it's, I've always felt, I've always felt the pull and the draw of nostalgia that, um, you know, that I experienced when thinking about, you know, my grandfather's life and thinking about my, my aunts and uncles lives, but there's also something that makes me suspicious of nostalgia and makes me want to kind of probe it and wonder what it really means and how does, how does, how does my uh, positionality um, measure up against either the difficulties or the, 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 the sort of like really romantic notions of, of you know, you know, Mexican or Mexican American experience in the United States. And so I think that this, this work, I, I kind of sometimes think of it as a failure in the best of all possible ways in that I had an expectation that um, I did my best to, to execute, but it's still not as, it's still not as good as, or good as it's, it's not as well crafted as an actual sombrero charro or, you know, you know, mariachi uh, uh, clothing. So that, that kind of speaks to my limitations. And I like that. I like like the moments where I realized I couldn't do it as well. And I'm like, okay, I can only get so close, you know? And, you know, I think what, what's still intact is this, this like moment of uh, appreciation and just the, the idea of adorning something to make it beautiful like that, that's not expected, I think was a good, it's a good process for me to go through. And, you know, I think you know, when you, uh, Javier, when you pulled the, um, the wrapping of it at, at Heaven Gallery when we got there and everyone was like, oh, wow. I was so, I was so blessed and kind of taken aback by that because, you know, I have like, I have attitudes and opinions about what the work is and, and how, you know, it may or may not relate to my work or how it, you know, I don't know, but, but to see someone, to, to see people appreciate it in that way, you know, I was just, I was happy and I was really blessed by that. So, um, you know, I think I, my hopes in terms of how it relates to the other work is I, I, I hope that it invites people in, but then you see the moments of like, where I just had to make it work. You know, I just had to like figure out how to like get it to where I wanted it to be. And that, that notion of like, or that, that quality of having to do your best with what you have is like, you know, I think that's something that I pull from all of my you know, family members and my ancestors, and that shows up in in a really celebratory way, and I think in all the work. So, yeah, I think it goes back to um to my poem of like where I'm like going well, in, in the sense of enjoying ingenuity, um, but then also like what William was saying about the objects, um, the still lives, and how he wanted to like reinterpret the um the still life and make it more. Um, there's like a rasquache um, aesthetic of like making making it work. Um, mm -hmm. And I also see it in a way um, in conversation with like Alejandro's pieces um, as it becomes like a translation of something, um, a transference. Um, yeah, and I, I'm walk, I'm, I welcome everyone else to, I don't know, to bring in a thought of anything, um, but that's how I'm like trying to see, I'm like bringing it in. Yeah, I think where what really sticks with me is the notion about romanticization and how it there is that fine line of how it can be dangerous and you know how it can like lead you know to it maybe you mean in some people's you know voyeurism etc. But I think with a lot of this work, it is a hint of romanticism, but with a very tangible reminder, um, and I think that's. Of, of what comes before that romanticization of what we are romanticizing, um, you know, given with this shovel, you know, yes, it's adorned. Yes, it has this romantic notion, but it is still a shovel. And as you said, you know, with the failed, how you see the failure, I think that those failures or those like moments of like, where you see the wear and like, oh, this could have been better. It's still a very real reminder of how, of how things are hard, 
um, of the hard work that goes into not just this making of work, but you know, what this is, represents, the story this represents, you know, the people this represents, um, which is, again, I think how I translate that to a lot of these things, you know, um, the like the romance lens about, you know, even the woman in the in the salon, you know, we have that romanticization that not everyone has, mm -hmm. I think. And I think us bringing that in is something really beautiful that we're constructing together as Itzel said with the collective imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's like, it's like this like weird liminal, sp and I mean like just a liminal space where like that you are romantic like there is like you realize you're romanticizing but then you realize you can't and then you realize you like where do you like it's like this talk like this pull like tug that i really like it's like almost like the horizon right like the horizon line and i think that's really powerful in in all of our works because we're like we want to but we can't and like we're always like having to make like shifts we always have to like recreate this thing because it's like this always changing like whether it's plays whether it's ourselves like there's just like this constant rhythm of like shift and that you can never really grab and hold on to these things that you want to hold on to and I think that's really what's powerful and then and what and then goes back to like what Nancy was saying about like them like it's like it's in you it's in your body like it's like we and our bodies become the vessels that like hold these things and but even then like we really don't know how to hold them or can't hold them or like yeah <laughs> it's fascinating I'm, I feel like that's the essence of the exhibition and I feel like we all finally were able to like, I feel like we're all able to really understand it collectively now too, which is really like mind blowing to me because I thought it was only like a thing that I only understood. And so, yeah. Yeah, I say we have this show in other places. <laughs> yes, that's exactly, we're, we're working towards that honestly, because I feel like this is telling of an experience mm -hmm. and of a moment like a moment that that only happens within like a second two seconds it's like it's it's like what Nitzel is talking about like she saw the woman in the in the salon it's like she, it was that instance that moment that made her want to like go back and like find a, like a sense of place in that in that moment and it's like it's it's like those little moments it's like in like Alejandro's like moment of play with like witchcraft and like it's just like these like things that have become really um yes they feel so long but they they're so short mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like the romanticization and um and then like the the hard truths are like you know when you have mag like two positive magnets and they won't touch each other and there's like they're repelling each other and there's like that space in which they refuse to cross and I feel like when you're saying it's that conflict and that push and pull I feel like that's the space like I exist in between you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and I could just going back to romanticization because I realized I'm like, wow, I was like romanticizing the salon experience so hardcore. Like now that I like went back and I got a haircut, um, there were other women who worked at the salon and I found out that they were always, they always kept their distance from me. And um, Sissy told me that the reason that they stayed away from me is because they thought I was gay. So it's like, oh, right. Like the, the homophobia that I know to be true is like present here as well you know like mm. this is this is it this is the way it is and the the romanticization it like what became like really real for me mm -hmm. you know um and I felt like that space with between mm -hmm. the magnets um yeah it's like how do you be yourself how do you how or while also being accepting that you're you may be misread um and I think that's where, where a lot of these pieces in the show have that moment, right? Um, 
in different ways, um, like the shovel, for example, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think we're wrapping, we're like at a point of a wrap up, but I think we're left off with like a lot of interesting points to kind of address and I think continue to push in our works and like find the opportunities to like grapple with. I don't know. I think it's, I don't, I think I'm, I'm left with a very insightful conversation i feel like we could have a conversation continue to have this conversation forever and i think that's what's exciting about the works um and our practices and who we are and our experiences um and our histories i think that all kind of plays a role in in this obviously you know obviously <laughs> I just wanted to add to, first of all, thank you everyone for coming today. This has been a wonderful talk. Um, I just wanted to add of thinking this, thinking of this exhibition as an extension of other exhibitions. So the window piece that's in that room is Edra Soto and it is a, her graft work that is inspired by the gates in Puerto Rico. And so whenever I look at that piece, I always think of it as a portal to something bigger into the place that we're creating for ourselves. And so I just wanted to say that that whole window with the plants, with the flowers and the, um, the piano is really an altar to this new history that we're trying to create a new future that we're trying to create for ourselves. And so I just wanted to bring up that point of of how your you this exhibition is building on that story that already was there waiting for you guys to come <laughs> and continue so um i also want to say that we're open this weekend so if anyone has not seen the show we will be here today and tomorrow um and the exhibition goes until i think it closes august 1st so definitely come visit us and um and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, all of you. And I, I definitely really resonate with the portal. I feel like we're all kind of allowing ourselves to create a type of portal, portals. So beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, thank you, Haven, for allowing us to um, have a show here at your gallery. And yeah, thank you all to all the artists and for showing up and really keeping it, sharing your, sharing space with each other. I feel like that's just, yeah, thank you. Juan, thank you everyone so Bye. much for well, the rest of your day. Yes. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye. Have a